this, but people have certain things about themselves that they kind of feel like nobody else can understand. And if you can find a book or a film where somebody expresses that, you're like, wow, that, that, that person gets exactly what, I, what I'm going through or went through or understands. And when it's something as rare as craniosynostosis, I can barely even say it. Um, it's pretty, pretty remarkable. So I'm heading to meet Case Johnston. This is Case Johnston. This is the Literally Podcast for podcasting here from my home in Ogden, Utah. Today, I am the guest, and it's going to be uh, that the show is going to be hosted by Trevor Byerl. Trevor, like me, was born uh, 71 or 71. 71. Um, with cranial synostosis, and we, we talk about this later, but both of us had the same correction for sagittal uh, synostosis. This book honestly changed my life. Oh, that's 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 amazing to hear. Yeah, yeah, and it's it true because for me, you know, there's just been this thing about my head, the mm-hmm. shape, the scar. Obviously, I don't remember the surgery. I was 13 months old. Mm-hmm. There's very few pictures of me in that time frame yeah. even. Yeah. So to find a book and read it and see somebody that completely understands Mm -hmm. the feeling that I have. And I, I I was, this is, this is the truth is like every day you get up and you know, you take a shower and you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and you think about my head. Mm -hmm. I think about my head every day for anybody who doesn't know this is, we should probably see what is cranial yeah, synostosis. Right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's the early closure of any of your cranial sutures. Um, and this is the, one of the things that I found out really early on that I didn't know, but the brain dictates the skull. Yeah. And not, I always thought the skull probably dictated the, the shape of the brain, but it's the opposite. The brain, as it grows, dictates the shape of the skull in your head. And so if one of those cranial sutures is closed, the brain's going to compensate in the opposite direction. So it's going to push out or inward, depending on where the suture is. But eventually it's going to get through that thin layer of skull and it's going to hit that hard skull and that pressure on the brain, wherever that suture is located is obviously going to affect that part of the brain's development. There's a story that my mom's like, well, yeah, I was really mad at your uncle for a really long time. I said, why was, cause like when you're before your surgery, he's like, yeah, that kid's head looks like a football, you know? And right? she's like, yeah. I think it, my mom doesn't cuss. Yeah. But she's probably like, fuck you. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who, who, yeah. Have some, have some sensitivity. You right. Know, when you right. Have, when you have a kid. And, yeah. Well, um, and he wasn't saying like, oh boy, you should, you should check that out. Your yeah, son's yeah. head looks like a football. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, football <laughs> head. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's and like, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The thing that, that haunts me about your book is the line your son's going to be a retard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was the hardest part about writing this book because my mom had put things away. She put them so far away. Uh, there's stuff in that first chapter about my story as a baby I'd never heard, and so I was full 38 years old when I finally when she finally told me. But how harsh, yeah. you know? How yeah. harsh is that for a nurse to look at a, a newborn and say, just coldly, you know, you know. There's something wrong with him, and there's uh, and that was seventy five. But there are other people in the book, other moms, with nurses would say the same thing to him, just just coldly say, "You your son's." Hmm. You think about the progress from us to now, and what was right before us. Mm-hmm. That was you know, I mean, it was you really were risking lives. Yeah. There's t- two different types of repair, basically, uh, these days. One is the CVR, which is the cranial vault reconstruction. And this is serious stuff. I that, mean, that, that was fascinating. I uh, didn't know that that's oh, something they do now. Extreme, it's, an extre- and it's extremely common. A neurologist will cut the skull off, pull it off. They'll break up the entire skull, and then they'll form it back to create the sutures. Yeah, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And it's extremely invasive. I mean, you're taking a kid's skull off. You're breaking it up, then you're molding it back together. Yeah. And it takes a long time. I mean, that's a lot of blood loss. It's a long long time under anesthesia for a, a, a baby, basically. Well, and we're talking basically almost newborns because they're doing yeah, these in, they got in the first soon, year. As soon as they can. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as you can. Because it's the more that that skull hardens, the more invasive, dangerous surgery that is. The, the, long, the, the earlier they can get with a, the pliable skull, 
that's great for doctors, you know, because they because they can do what they need to. But it's, yeah. when they gets hard, that's trouble, you know. And uh, from my understanding, you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but <I've, laughs> uh, but then the other surgical option and uh, is the um, endoscopic, but you have to wear a helmet for a year, you know. And that's the thing. It's like the endoscopic. It's really it's not nearly as invasive. They basically can go in and put holes and pull skull out and then they you know and so the kids aren't losing that much blood they're not under for that long it's basically doing our surgery um with an endoscope yeah you know without doing a full thing so their scars are like this and like this you know so the question is and but the thing is about these the cvr is they shape these kids heads god they look they look gorgeous i mean they 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 re basically remodel the skull and it just grows and these kids have these perfectly round heads and there's a controversy about it and within the community still like what should we be doing you got into insurance companies mm -hmm. and the idea that it's a cosmetic yeah that's surgery thing well it, it's <laughs> i know and that's that a, goes that, somewhere that needs so <laughs> far <laughs> Because um, talk about messing with parents' heads. Completely. Yeah, because it's it's cosmetic because they will reshape it to make it look better. So it has to have the cosmetic tag. Yeah, yeah. And it's elective because it's not life or death. So these doctors, so they have to say these words. They have to say it's elective and it's cosmetic. Like a non-elective surgery is, you know, you, you get in a car accident and you go into the ER. No one's electing to have that surgery. <laughs> you need to have that surgery to save your life. If you have to plan a surgery that's elective and so they tell a parent well this is an elective cosmetic surgery and talk about the way you would spin on your own kid like you know i'm gonna have my kid's head taken off no doctor is gonna tell you i mean they have to say you have a choice but th any doctor i talked to said no like you said it's got to be corrected i mean we got wonky heads right but if we didn't get fixed yeah It'd be much worse. Oh, it might protrude, <laughs> yeah. you know, from yeah. our skull yeah. out like this. I don't know where I would be if, if I didn't have the surgery. No, so I don't know either. I, I thank my parents. I do too. You know? Mm -hmm. My God, if, if if this was the, you know, a cosmetic surgery and this is the end result, yeah, you know, that, you'd yeah, be like, I want my money back. Know, yeah, exactly you know? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, come on. That's the truth, you know? <laughs> I've had people say, oh, you know, it's a beautiful scar and, you sure. know. That sounds nice, but I don't feel that way. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I know it's part of me. Yeah. You know, and I've gotten to a, a much better spot with it, but I'm not comfortable really with it. Yeah. I can accept it most days, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a difficult thing. And like yeah, every today day. to wake up a today and I'm like, you know what, you know, I should just shave again. I should just be so proud of it. You know, this is me. This is, right. this is my my skull i remember standing in, in in line in the grocery store and a guy looked at me i had my head shaved and he looked at my head and he's like oh man you had brain surgery why don't you go ahead of me hmm. and i'm like wow you know because again this this was a surgery that happened i have no recollection yeah. of it it you know physically hasn't had a big impact on my life mm -hmm. But somebody looked at me and was like, oh my gosh, you should go ahead of me in line at the grocery store of all places. Like, and I felt, I felt bad, Yeah, you know, because I know that, you know, there are people that are going through things, That's, you know, yeah. and, and I don't want to, I don't want to put myself in the same shoes as these people, mm -hmm. you know, but I guess some people can look at me in the same way and it's yeah. just, it's weird, you know, and even within the cranial synostosis world, people's you know, they have a lot more significant birth defect than me. And so then and you battle this thing of like, stop being so, stop being so <laughs> right. selfish. You're ha you yeah. know, you, you're pretty healthy overall. Yeah. You, you know, you, you've got these things and that's that battle, you know, and, and I could, there will be people that probably look at this and say, you're, you're pretty shallow case, <laughs> you know, you, re you are yeah. you're that stressed about that. Um, and that's that dynamic you get with something like this. But I think, and at the same time, I think it's like, like you said, it's like, it's with you every day. Yeah. You know, that trauma sits in your body. Yeah. It really does. Even if we don't remember, there's, we had our skulls opened up. <laughs> exactly. You know, bone taken out. Yeah. You know, I wish I could give you like a, just a, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Nah. You know, yeah. it's like, and it's all, it's all in your head to, uh, well, I, mean, I know. Yeah, He's that came out. I didn't mean to do it, but it really a the, lot the of the puns it are free here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Trevor, you found the book, but um, I mean, is there a 
Facebook page? Like, is there are there groups out there? Like, where do you go? You got the Cranio Kids, and mm-hmm. and there are Facebook pages and things like that. But you you have some you know you have personal knowledge of these people, so I I think you should kind of yeah. I mean, and that's part of it too. Is like when we talk about our moms, they didn't have that. You know, oh, they, yeah. they were out there. They didn't think any other kid had this, and they had no. They had family. Oh, luckily, like my mom always says, my dad was in Iraq. You know, and then she apologizes for being emotional. Like, you know, <laughs> she, but she's so strong. They had family, but nobody really understood. Now, like Facebook pages, there's like four major ones. You know, and there's um, Cranial Kids was a big deal, and Katie May Garner wrote the foreword to this, and yeah. she's an amazing woman. And she, her son had cranial stenosis. She started Cranial Kids as a support group because she didn't know anything anybody else. And they usually form out of necessity. Somebody that's in it says, "I need to help other people," and that's what brought me here. Is I've you know I have these weird medical things that I've been dealing with in my family and my life and finding out that there's not enough information out there about it and then finding the people that I can talk to about it and it's like let's let's put that on some tape and get it out so other people can understand and not be in the situation that we were in mm-hmm. you know let's help some people so that's that's the hope for this <laughs> here we go no idea how to get back This is the easy part. This is the, the normal part of my head. This is the tricky part. That's where you hit the bumps. Like I said, we're, we're dinosaurs. <laughs> these kids these days, their heads are, they look bigger, just, they look better than normal kids' heads because they get shaped. Right? They get yeah. shaped and that's kind of like plastic surgeon. Yeah, versus surgeon get it, working on you get a nice, perfectly shaped skull. It's actually, yeah, who could say they have a perfectly shaped skull? See, they do. They're the ones that do. What's crazy about our scars is they're so the same. Is this the uh, first time either one of you has seen another person? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's really crazy, actually. We know the rest of you are out there. Join us. <laughs>